lawyers must have different reaction to um, judgment of court. No, we right. cannot um, react like the general populace would react. We cannot be sentimental and we cannot um, come out publicly to denounce or derail the, especially the Supreme Court, because the Supreme Court is, as you would know, the final in the hierarchy of courts, that's the highest, mm -hmm. and, and um, it's revered. So um, the attitude of a lawyer, quite different from a man on the street, would be to, uh, to if there's an opportunity in another case, you know, challenge the reasoning of the Supreme Court in that, in that, in, in this, in the, the other case, subsequently, you know, but not to carry play cards, not mm -hmm. to uh, criticize, or not to, uh, we are quite in a regulated profession. Yeah, I might disagree with the Supreme Court, maybe because of their previous decisions in some other cases, um, but I will not, do as Atiku has done mm -hmm. um, to publicly criticize the Supreme Court, especially because the reason, the, the reasoning, uh, as I understand it, the, the Supreme Court has not yet given its reason for, for the decision it took. We're still uh, w waiting for it. Um, it's only when the reasoning comes out that you'll be able to read and appreciate really what was the, uh, the, the reason, yes, the considerations behind the decisions they took. All right, so this takes me to my second question, which is the national uh, chairman of the PDP, Uchi Sekundos, has yeah. also called for a protest. Now, do you think this is the proposed civil disobedience is yes. the right thing to do or the way to go at this time? Well, uh, so from a legal standpoint, I don't think it's, it's going to achieve anything uh, on, on this um, issue. It could subsequently play in the mind, I, I don't know, but it could mm -hmm. subsequently play in the mind of the justices in subsequent cases. This case is quite intriguing. Um, even the position the Supreme Court has taken is quite intriguing. You see, um, Uche Ngosu, in December of 2019, just a month ago, the Supreme Court invalidated um, his candidature mm -hmm. on the basis that um, he had dual nomination. That's correct. Um, so he was nom validly nominated by the APC and validly nominated by the other okay. party. So, which means he's a candidate of mm -hmm. the APC and he, so he couldn't stand election. Now, the Supreme Court has, has said another person, Hopu Uzodima, is the properly elected candidate of the APC, mm -hmm. you know, um, um, for, for, for Imo State. So what, what happened to their decision in, in, in 2019? Just uh, less than a month just ago. Just less than a month ago that, that Uche Ngosu is the candidate. So, so it, it, it's, there's so many complexity to this, mm -hmm. to this case, yeah. Now, in the event, let's say, that uh, the go-ahead will uh, with this protest, uh, so to speak, do you think there will be any impact since the ruling is done already? Well, um, judgment, of course are not like executive decisions you know okay. that is the um, that's the difference between the, the judiciary as, as an arm of government and the other and the other arms of government mm -hmm. or organs of government um, the executive and the legislature uh, Supreme Court cannot just uh, wake up and, and write a memo and say, oh, sorry, we made a mistake. Hope who does it, sorry, can, can, you re, can you return the certificate? It, 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 we made a mistake, it can't happen. Mm -hmm. Once a case has been decided, it's been decided, you know, uh, especially, but you can't go back and change it. Uh, the, in law, there's only a very narrow, narrow, narrow corridor for a court to revisit um, its judgment. And it is not on the substantive issues, only if there was um, a clerical errors or those sort of things. But on the substantive is it's almost um, impossible. Mm. So whether you carry a placard or not, or, you know, and don't forget that it's not everybody in Nigeria that is sympathetic to PDP. That's so correct. while the PDP are carrying placard, believe me, you're going to see some other people are carrying placard for the Supreme Court, uh, just like what we had in Showeri's case. That's correct. People even carry placard in support of a DSS um, uh, against Falana, you know, uh, and, and then this other fellow was beating up you know, mm -hmm. black and blue. Vinci. So, so, so he. So the sympathy is not only and and worse for PDP. They were the ones who ruled the country for a number of years mm -hmm. and had 
lost people's sympathy. That's why even the APC came in, you know, as an alternative, you know. So, well, I, I don't know. It's all going to have any effect, all right, in my let's, opinion. Let's talk about the electoral umpire, INEC. What's yes. your assessment of the role they played in that, you know, in the state government? I, I think INEC did the proper thing. I have always been an advocate for INEC. As a matter of fact, if you look at the... Uh, if you look at the rules of procedure of election petition, mm -hmm. um, the rules of procedure of puts the burden of proof of whether the election was validly conducted or not on the petitioner. I've always been a, a proponent that that should be changed. The burden of proof should be on the party who conducted, on the person who conducted the election. Okay. He's the person who should say whether he conducted elections or not. In election petitions, because of that provision, mostly you don't see INEC. INEC refuses to, refuse to testify. You know, they don't come to testify, right? Because most of the incriminating evidence will come from them through cross-examination, so mm -hmm. they stay away. Now, in this particular case, they did the right thing. It's akin to what happened in Akwa Ibom in 2015. They were practically in the in the state, half of the state, mm -hmm. there was no election. You know, uh, INEC would distribute materials to his staff. On the way, they would be well led. The, the, the documents are, are, are stolen, taken to uh, the house of, of, of one, one, one stalwart, sat down, they sit down there, and they will feel you won't see. So, I next staffs are waiting at the polling unit, they won't see the, 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 see the, 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 the materials. Mm -hmm. Materials won't come. Then, six o'clock, you go to the collection center. Someone and brings results, results. Sheets, all feel that that's exactly that is what I claim happened in Imo State. You know, they were in the 300 and something polling units, there were no election at all. But there Pe were results. People were waiting at the polling units, materials never came. Now, at the collation center, someone brought results sheets and said, and they were all filled out in, in, in favor of PDP. The question you need to ask is that the people who voted for PDP for governorship mm -hmm. in this region. Why, why didn't PDP win in, in House of, uh, House of, uh, mm -hmm. House of Assembly election or House of Rep? And, and, and this, uh, uh, most, some of these elections were conducted the very same day, you know, but, but it, 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 it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Now, someone brought, and I know said, I can't accept this result because there were, no, there were no elections. And they said so at the tribunal. At the tribunal level, tribunal accepted it. The court of appeal accepted it. The explanation of of uh, of, uh, of INEC, but Supreme Court, for some reason, um, discountenanced it. Mm. Uh, it's surprising to a lot of lawyers. Surprising, because it goes against the grains of decision that Supreme Court has also held in previous cases. So. Um, um, that, that's, but, but that's where we find ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are saddled with the decision, yeah. yeah. Now, finally, uh, do you think we'll see more of this kind of uh, ruling from the Supreme Court and back and forth between candidates and of different parties? This is the first. This is the first um, um, the Supreme Court has given to in, in a substantive election matter. Most of the times, as all the pre-election matters, I, I think this is the first in a substantive election matter. Now, um, you heard the Supreme I, I believe that the the, I personally believe that there should be special tribunals set out for election petition because this whole election petition thing has caused lots of crisis in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. um, for the first time that you heard where Supreme Court called uh, during the Wamako in Sokoto, yeah. the Wamako election tribunal. The Supreme Court did not have jurisdiction to, to, to hear election petition cases um, by the Constitution. So governorship election petition cases were, uh, uh, ought to have stopped at the Court of Appeal. But Supreme Court sat and called and called the petition to the Supreme Court under what they call at the time inherent jurisdiction. They didn't have jurisdiction at all. It was only after that the, 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 the constitution was changed mm -hmm. and now gave the, the Supreme Court um, jurisdiction to hear it. But at the time they did that, they did not have jurisdiction. So you now had a situation where the president of the Court of Appeal now came and said, oh, and swore to an affidavit that the reason why Supreme Court did that is because his then Chief Judge, uh, Justice of Nigeria, Kassin Alu, had interest in the, in the matter, and that's why he did it. There was all sort of allegations of corruption and all that. It was the first time ever that those sort of things were happening. And it has not abated. 
since that time we've been going downhill. Well, I'm not saying that this particular um, decision is is wrong or right because, mm -hmm. like I said, I've not seen the. But I'm just saying generally that um, politics, you know, um, has permeated, seems to have permeated into. I mean, how could I mean you see Atiku uh, standing out to 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 derail the uh, uh, upbraid the, the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. you know, openly people wanting to protest against decisions. Of the Supreme Court, these things are unthinkable. These are things that pre, pre, hitherto were unthinkable. That a common man would stand and, 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 and speak against the hallowed chambers of the Supreme Court. But hey, I think this is what where we found ourselves. We've brought this on.